Hello, welcome to another Music Academy workshop, doing our best to hook you up with both the connections and knowledge that you need to pursue your musical dream. This week we're focusing on law and finance, how to avoid getting screwed. On the law vibe, thank you to John from Spearing Way, and on the finance vibe, thanks to Tim from Artism, who are going to share their guruship with you right about now. Okay, so three tips. Um, I'd say, first tip, um, you shouldn't sign anything that people send through to you without having a really good read of it and putting it past somebody who knows what they're talking about. So that could be someone who's done lots of records in the past or a manager or a lawyer. Second point is more to build on that point and think, well, what should you actually have in there? In terms of um, the deal that you're going to sign up as a new artist, the main thing to, to, to bear in mind is not to sign away all of your rights for a long time. So not to bind yourself to one, to working with one label. Um, because it could well be that the label won't do such a great job or um, won't pay you as you hoped that they would. And if you're stuck with them as far as the contract is uh, concerned for three singles or a, an album and or two albums and they have options for more than just the first thing you want to try out with them, then it's a sticky situation to be in. So. Um, Try just to sign one single and see how you get on. That brings me on to the third point. In the music industry, people work with each other lots and they all get on as friends and they rarely use uh, written con contracts and rarely put things down in writing because that's the last thing that they're thinking about when they're making music and having fun doing that and working with each other. Um, but when things do go a bit wrong, and that can often be caused by actually making any kind of money from what you do with with your, uh, with your music and trying to work out who should get paid what. Um, if you have nothing in, in uh, writing, then it makes life quite, quite difficult. So it's a good idea to take the time each time you write a song, for instance, to sit down and work out who gets what share in that song. And likewise, if you come to other, if you work with people like session musicians or singers, then it's a good idea just to get their con consent to use their vocals in writing in some way, whether that's an email or just some, something very simple that they sign, just so that you keep a kind of a paper trail or an email trail in writing of what people actually say they're happy for you to do with their playing or their singing. So my three top tips. The first one is to decide whether you're a hobby or a business. The words HMRC will use are intent for commerciality. So if you are in it and you're deliberately trying to sell things to make money, whether that be gigs, CDs, merchandise, then you need to start talking to HMRC about registering for taxes. The second one is if you're in a band, is to decide on the formation, as in the legal structure. Are you a limited company, a partnership, or are you all sole traders? Because there are different ways for accounting for it. And finally, the third one would be keep your receipts for everything because there is availability to claim for up to six years of past purchases on things like equipment, uh, guitars, keyboards, pianos, etc. Um, but generally, keep all your receipts and keep them organised. I told you they were gurus. What great insight from our two speakers. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, John. If I had to hone in on just one thing from each side, I would say keep your receipts, keep your receipts, keep your receipts. You'll never know when you might need them. You finally break through after four years of hard graft. You will be grateful that you did. And on the legal side, never, ever sign that contract first time around. Always read it, reflect on it, reach out, try and blag some free advice from a lawyer. At least get some friends, people you trust to read over it. Keep your receipts, never sign first time. If you found this useful, we've got a number of Music Academy videos now from previous workshops, all doing the same thing, just trying to help. Give you some knowledge, contacts, insights that can help you be successful in the pursuit of your musical dream. Go to our YouTube channel, feel the music, and you can find them all there.